Hello guys, my name is Miguel Sapero. I am the creator of the Box of Farming. In this update, we're going to be looking at. In the past month, I added a new form of computing the sky color, and this is using some form of light scattering. So as light travels through the atmosphere, it changes color, and this creates that effect that is so characteristic of the skies here in planet Earth. Earlier this month, I posted a video about this, so I will not be talking too much about the atmosphere scattering or the day and night uh, cycles. So if you haven't checked uh, this video already, please go and check it out. So as you can see, there are some clouds in the sky. This is only one layer of clouds. This is the really high layer you get always over your head. So eventually I will have other layers in there. You will have clouds beneath you. You will be able to go through the clouds. You will see clouds going through the mountains. So what you see here is only the really top layer. And if you look at pictures of real clouds, you would see there is always this really high layer of clouds that are usually very thin. They move very slowly. And this is what we are looking at here. Now, this layer of clouds is actually very inexpensive to compute. This weird texture you see popping up at the left is actually the base texture for all the clouds you see. This texture tiles perfectly, and it has already baked the illumination from the sun and the upper sky layers into it. So when you look at it as an RGB image, it doesn't make much sense but it does allow you to compute very quickly the appearance of clouds. As the sun moves through the sky, this texture updates, but this happens only once in a while. Now, this is good only if you're doing a flat layer of clouds, but this is exactly what we want in this case, because this is the layer that will be always above your head, and you for sure need this layer. So you have to be able to compute it very quickly. Now there is something else I want, I want to show. And this is something that doesn't have anything to do with the sky. This time we're going to be looking down. Here you have a scene that appears to be very simple. There are only a few mountains in the distance. There is not a lot of detail into the scene. But once I, I show you the actual wireframe, all the triangles that are being pushed through the graphics card in this scene, you will see that there is actually a lot of stuff going on. And this is somewhat of a problem. Right here we have an entire cave formation going under you. And this is taking a lot of polygons to render. Problem is, you never see this. This is really going underground. So there is no point in, in pushing all these, these polygons. But it's actually very tricky to find out we shouldn't be showing this in the first place. In this particular case, we're looking at terrain. But this could be the same with uh, a structure that somebody built. Something like a tower or a castle, a city. So you need a, a single, generic, robust way to determine what is seen, what is not, from the viewer's point of view. And this is not trivial. So I did some work in this direction and I'm quite happy with the results. I have a method that is now able to detect what portions of the scene can be discarded so they never go into the graphics pipeline. This saves a lot of processing and this is processing you could be using to have more detail in the areas where it actually matters. That's all for today. The next update is going to be really nice. Make sure you don't miss it.